In today's tutorial, I will show you how to make an interactive PowerPoint, how to make backgrounds that cannot be moved, and how to upload and transfer a PowerPoint to Google Slides. I will be making a word sort activity for students. When you first create your PowerPoint, you might need to change the size of your slides. If you'd like to change the size of your slides, go to Design, then Slide Size, then Custom Slide Size, and adjust your slide to the desired size you'd like. For this tutorial, I will be making the slide size 7 by 5. When you change the slide size, a message may pop up asking if you want to maximize or ensure fit. I'm going to choose Ensure Fit. If you will be using an image in your background, make sure that your slide size is the same size as the image you will be using. Next, you can decide to change the background color by going to Format Background and selecting an option there. You can choose Solid Fill, Gradient Fill, or Picture or Texture Fill. You can select an image from your computer if you'd like a picture for the background. Now I'm ready to get started. I'm going to start by going to Insert, Table, and select a 2 by 3 size table. To adjust the colors and outlines of the table, go to the Format Shape panel on the right-hand side of the screen and change to No Fill. Then navigate to the toolbar at the top. Select Borders and All Borders. Select the top row of the table, go to Layout in the toolbar, and select the Merge Cells. I like to change the position of the text so that it is centered in the table. To do this, select all of the cells in the table, go to Table Tools and Layout. Then you can make these centered adjustments. You can also adjust the size and type of font in the toolbar. Next, enter the text that you would like to have in each cell of the table. When you are finished, you may need to adjust the lines to make the table look the way you want. If you would like to add images to your background, first go to Insert, then Pictures, To resize your images, hold down the Shift key and drag the images in from the corner. Now your background is ready. To save your background and make it flattened so that students cannot change it, first go to File, Export, Change File Type, and select PNG. Choose the destination to save the files and decide if you just want a PNG of this slide or all slides in your presentation. To insert the flattened image into your background, you first need to create a new slide. Go to Insert, then Blank Slide. Then go to Design Background, then Format Background, and select the image you just saved. Next, we will start on the movable pieces. There are a few different ways you can do this. One way is to add just text. Another would be to add just an image or an image with text. To create a movable piece with just text, go to Insert and Select Text Box. 
Then change the font size and style. Center the text if you'd like. You could also adjust the background color of the text box or use an outline. To create more text boxes that are identical, just select the text box, hit Ctrl D and duplicate the text box. Then just change the word on the next tile. If you'd like to create a movable piece with clip art, you can do this a few different ways. One way would be to insert a shape, adjust the fill and outside lines, then insert an image. When you insert an image, you will need to resize it. Hold down the shift button, drag the image in by the corner, that will maintain the proportions. Then move the image over the shape. Hold down the shift button and make sure to select the shape and the image. Go to Picture Tools, Format, Align Center, and align middle to center both pieces. Then go to group and group the pieces together. If you will be making more movable pieces, I would recommend duplicating the shape first. To add text to the clip art, you could skip aligning the middle of the picture and just move it towards the top of the shape instead. Then add a text box right underneath the image and type into the text box the text that you would like. When you are finished, select all three objects and group them together. Just a tip, if you plan on sharing this file with students or others, it's a good idea to flatten each of the movable pieces so that your selected font will display appropriately on any computer screen. If you choose to not flatten the movable pieces with text and the people with whom you share this file do not have the same font installed, then another font will be substituted by PowerPoint and the text will look different than you wanted. Also, if you are providing a file with clip art to others, it's very important to flatten the images with text and a colored background shape so that other people cannot just save the clip art to their computer and reuse it later. This will help protect the intellectual property of others. To save each movable piece, make sure all pieces in each object are grouped together. Then right click, go to Save as Picture, and save each image to a folder. I recommend creating a new slide and reinserting each movable piece. I also recommend saving your original file, then deleting the unflattened movable pieces and saving the file under a new name. Then you will have a master file that you can edit later and a file that you can give to other people with flattened images. If you would like to have written directions, for your file, those can be typed off to the side or inserted through audio. If you will be transferring this PowerPoint to Google Slides, just keep in mind that audio will not transfer from PowerPoint to Google Slides. You can, however, record the audio, save it to your computer, and upload it later to Google Slides. 
Now that you have finished making your interactive PowerPoint, it is ready to upload to Google Slides. Log into Google Slides and go to Open File Picker, then Upload, and select the file from your computer. This will automatically transfer the file to Google Slides. If you upload the file to your Google Drive, then open the file in Slides. You will need to convert it to Slides by going to Open with Google Slides, then File, and Save as Google Slides. This is especially helpful if you already have a PowerPoint loaded to Google Drive. That's how you should transfer it over to Google Slides. Thanks for watching and have a great day.